one year old gentleman was referred to us for the favor of uh, ojidoscopy and evaluation patient has undergone a pneumatic dilatation elsewhere uh, about few months back in september 2011 and still continues to have symptoms so we see classical presence of fluid in a dilated esophagus this is a classical image of a dilated esophagus with incoherent contraction you can see incoherent contraction of the esophagus and these are called the tertiary contractions of the esophagus you can see that and this happens because the les is very tight and les is not opening up look at this these are classical tertiary contractions can you see that ring like strict uh, contractions and these are the tertiary contractions of the esophagus because they are trying to push and propel the contents of the esophagus across the les the lower esophageal sphincter you can see les is very tight is not opening up even if after giving some air you can barely see and you can see the spasm there again so les is in spasm very tight les again it goes in spasm you can see that and this is the cause of patient symptoms of achalasia cardiaca you can see here so now very gently we are going to maneuver our scope i'm trying to push my scope and with a classical give i enter the stomach now this is a classic give you experience when you see a patient with achalasia cardiaca turn to clockwise you can see some chronic gastritis and then we go to the pyloric opening is mandatory to see the upper gi tract you can see some erosions in the duodenum so erosions are still there uh, this is a white light endoscopy you can see erosions and the moment you turn to narrow band imaging this is the kind of imaging you will have on uh, nbi so we go into this duodenal bulb go up to the duodenal first and second part and turn right and do up movement and clockwise talk of the body and you enter the second part at this stage you straighten the scope like the way you straighten the scope in ERCP you will go deep into the D2 D3 junction so you are right in the D3 area you can see the third part of the duodenum you are back into the stomach and then we will do J maneuver at the incisura angularis and you can see how tight is the grip of the LES on the scope you can see that and this is suboptimal result of the previous dilatation and therefore patient still continues to have symptoms and therefore we will go ahead with pneumatic dilatation repeat attempt uh because of previous dilatation it's extremely important to be very very careful when you dilate this uh, les because it can have potential chance of perforation and we need to be very very careful when you uh, dilate this uh, les so what we're going to do is we're going to come to the les lower esophageal sphincter area here and it is exactly at 30 almost 40 cm we have measured it and now we'll push push the guide wire and gently remove the scope and over this uh, guide wire we will load a 30 mm balloon and try and achieve a reasonable dilatation so we will now do pneumatic dilatation under fluoroscopy control and we will measure the balloon uh distance on the scope we'll put it the middle middle part of the balloon on uh, this is the balloon so these are the two middle markers of the balloon so this is a classical balloon you can see here this is a pneumatic balloon 30 mm and these are the two central markers so we will put this two central markers at 40 cm uh from the incisors and we will put a tape on it like this so we'll put a tape on the on the balloon so this we will go and dilate so we'll now load the balloon uh you will see it on fluoroscopy as it goes down on the guide wire so this is a 30 mm balloon and we will very gradually gently dilate because of previous dilatation you have to be very careful here and uh, we will lubricate it you can see on the fluoroscopy now uh we will you will see the guide wire you can see the balloon going down 
you can see the markers going down and now I'm coming right across so the two markers are coming right across the LES okay fine now at this stage we will hook on to the inf uh, inflator with uh, PSI meter and uh, we will gently fluoroscopy so you can see that there is a waste there right at uh, the center you can see a waste in the balloon and the end point freeze you can see the waste of the balloon uh, we can get the arrow on to that can we get the arrow onto the waste yes that's the waste of the balloon and uh, you have to inflate the balloon fluoro till the waste disappears so now we are slowly inflating the balloon you can see the waste opening up there is still some amount of waste there and uh, it, it, it appears to be extremely tight there fluoro and we are trying to very very gently open up the waste unless the waste disappears the dilatation is not complete fluoro please we are very very gradually gently going up on fluoro you can see the waste is slowly disappearing you can see it is now gently disappearing there I am at 6 psi here and we will go a little higher pressure and you can see now the waste almost disappearing and opening up uh, the entire LES so at this point fluoro we will hold on this dilatation for a period of exactly one and a half minutes fluoro so now you see on the arrow that the, the arrow will show you that the waste has completely opened up so you will see the arrow the waste has completely opened up and the balloon has straightened up fluoro and this is the end point of dilatation when you have complete obliteration of the waste of the LES fluoro at this stage we will give intravenous antibiotics <coughs> and painkillers to the patient and we will do fluoroscopic evaluation at the same time you can see the balloon completely inflated fluoro we are going little higher pressure almost at 8 psi here now fluoro and you can see the complete obliteration of the waste so now at this stage fluoro will deflate the balloon again you will see the air going out of the balloon you can see that de decompression Flu stop fluoro and we will reinflate again as you will see here now we are going to reinflate again the balloon fluoro and see how easily it opens up so this tells us that the LES has opened up fairly uh, good enough now as the balloon opens up easily so we'll get one more dilatation up to 10 psi fluoro please <coughs> so now we are 10 psi the balloon has opened up fairly easily without any resistance <coughs> and this uh, signifies fairly decent uh, dilatation fluoroscopy we will deflate again fluoro and you see how it deflates the balloon just to show how easily it has opened up I will inflate the balloon one more time one two fluoro 
and 3 it just straightens up easily without any resistance and this tells us fluoroscopy please there is adequate dilatation of the LES with 30 mm balloon now whenever we are dilating a patient who has already undergone a dilatation once is very very important to start with a 30 mm balloon fluoro please and not to go beyond 30 mm we have gone up to 10 psi now so that is the maximum pressure we have exerted at the LES and this should uh, give definite relief to the patient now we will deflate the balloon and I will take out the full assembly under fluoroscopy with the guide wire and we will do an endoscopy so now after dilatation we will let's have a very quick evaluation of what has happened you can see the tertiary contractions you can see some presence of blood which is usually present you can see the LES now completely open wide open look at that so wide open LES after pneumatic dilatation a scope has gone in there is no evidence of any perforation and we will not do too much of evaluation here this is good enough the LES is completely open and this should give relief to the patient this is end of the procedure no need for contrast injection contrast study because we have seen endoscopy